Hello. Welcome to EasyVB. Tutorial 11. In tutorials, 1, up to 10, we should have established a beginner level understanding of Visual Basic and how to create and code simple applications. Our examples in those tutorials may not have been practical applications in themselves, but they would have served as a learning platform to explain some principles and some methods that can be used later. If you follow tutorials 1 through 10, you have probably seen enough of the blue picture box and the various methods of moving it around, so in this tutorial we will move on to code something quite different and with a more practical potential. So in this tutorial we will create the beginning stage of an on-screen keyboard. We will learn a little more visual basic, but mostly we will only use what we have already learned in the first 10 tutorials. Here, we are showing you the end result application we will develop, and it will only take a few minutes. OK, let's get started. Create a new Windows Forms application. Drag the form size out, until it is quite wide. For reference, our tutorial form size is set with width 660 and height 460. Create a button. Set its size to 50 times 50. Change its name to BTNQ and change its text to Q. Set its location to X27 and Y181. Change its back color to light coral. Change its flat style to flat. Change its four color to midnight blue. Change its font style to Comic Sans MS. Change its font size to 16. Change bold to true. Go to flat appearance and change the border color to midnight blue. Change border size to 3. Change the mouse down back color to light yellow. Change the mouse over back color to light salmon. OK. Run the application to check the appearance and see how that looks when we click on the button. It looks fine but if you prefer other fonts and colors, do go ahead and explore the options. Close the application. Now copy and paste the button. Then place the new button alongside the original button queue. Note that the new button snaps to a position and there is a gap between the buttons. The size of the gap is controlled by the margin property which we can change. Select both buttons and go to the properties menu. Scroll down to margins and click the plus symbol. We can see that the margins are set default as 3 pixels. This is larger than we want, so go to all and change 3 to 1. Go back to the form and reposition the button. Note that it now snaps to position with a smaller gap. OK. Create another 8 buttons for this first row. Create a second row of 9 buttons, and a third row of 7 buttons.
one by one change the name of each button and the text on each button until the classic, QWERTY, keyboard is formed. Create a space bar and three more buttons, clear, backspace, and enter. To distinguish from the letter buttons, change the back color and mouse over back color of the four non-letter buttons. Run the application and click the various buttons to check the appearance. Close the application now and look at the code. Where is it? Where is the code? There isn't any, yet we can run an application which looks visibly almost complete. This demonstrates the ease of Visual Basic and its great popularity, since really quite a lot of the applications can be created on the form design without having to write a single line of code. Go to the form design again and create a text box. Change its name to TB1. Go to the font and change size to 16 and bold to true. Scroll down the properties menu and find multi-line. Change multi-line from false to true. Note that this allows the text box to have more than one line of text. The default setting for text boxes is single line so we must change this property if we want to have more than one line. Go to the form designer stretch out the size of the text box and reposition it. For reference, our tutorial text box location is, x13, y25, and its size is, width 618 height 137. Click on the form and change also its back color to improve the appearance. Now it is time to write some code. First we will create a click event sub for all of the letter buttons. Select all of the letter buttons, go to the event menu, and create a click event sub. We can see that the event sub is created, but we have so many buttons, it creates this very long line of code. Wrap the line a few times so we can see the code. Write a comment to remind of the subs function. Now write a single line of code tb1.txt equals tb1.txt plus replace, then in brackets, sender.name, comma, btn in quotes, comma, then quotes. Run the application and type a few letters. Does it work? Test every letter button to check there are no errors. Close the application and look at the code. We are learning one new function command here which is, replace. So what this line of code is doing is, it is saying that the text written to text box TB1 is the same as the text already written to TB1, plus, 
the text from the replace function. What the replace function is doing is taking the button name, the sender name, let's say for example the sender is btnq. Then it is removing the letters btn from the sender name and replacing those letters with what is inside the quotes, which is nothing. So in this example tb1 text would be what it is already, plus the letter q, which was the outcome of the replace function. As an experiment, let's now put some text in the empty quotes, right, easy vb. Run the application, we can see now that every time we click a letter it writes, easy vb, and the letter. It writes, easy vb, because that is what we are replacing the letters btn with from the sender name. Close the application and make one further experiment, replace the quotes with the null value, nothing. We met the term nothing in earlier tutorials. Run the application, and yes, we can see it works just the same as having empty quotes. Ok we can now type all the letters, although they are all capitals for this quick tutorial. Now let's add some functionality for the space, backspace, enter, and clear. In the form design select all four of these buttons. Go to the event menu and create a click event. Go to the event subcode and add a comment to remind of the subs function. First write some code for the spacebar button. Run the application to test the spacebar code. We can observe that it works just fine. Writing spaces as required. Close the application and look again at the code. It is quite straightforward what it is doing. If the sender is btn space, then the text box tb1 text is itself plus a space, which is shown within the quotes. OK, now write the code for the enter button. Again we have an if then statement. And again we have text box tb1 text equal itself plus another term. In this case the other term is vb new line. Run the application to test the enter button. We can observe that it works as required, taking us to a new line when we need it. That works so close the application and write code for the backspace button. As before it is, an if, then, statement, then we have a term involving text box tb1 text, a substring, so this code is taking a part of the tb1 text string, actually, it is taking the whole string except the very last character, substring, is the function, 0, is the start point in the tb1 text string, tb1.text.length is just the number of characters that are in tb1 and minus 1 is taking away the last character, for example if we had written, easy vb, for the substring, 0 is the start of the string, the length of easy vb including the space is 7 characters, and the minus 1 term removes the b from the end of the string, this gives us what we want which is a backspace in the written text. Run the application to test the backspace button, there, it works as expected. Finally, we will write the code for the clear button. When we press the clear button we want all the text in the text box to be removed. The command is very easy, we just write tb1.clear. Run the application and test all functions. We can see that it works fine, and while for the moment it is only writing capital letters, and there remain a few other limitations. It is the start of a good functional on screen, keyboard. There are only 21 lines of code in total, 
But if we discount comments and event handler code that the system wrote for us then we only wrote 5 lines of actual code to create this application. That is awesome really and a clear demonstration of how powerful the Visual Basic language is. Ok. In the tutorial 11, we used our learning from previous tutorials to create a practical on-screen, keyboard, application. We have also learned a bit more about text strings, with the functions, replace, and substring. In future tutorials we may return to the keyboard application to develop it further, or as a learning platform for more code lessons. With the first 11 tutorials we have moved along quite well to demonstrate how easy it can be to make applications with very little code. However, to go further we will need to understand more of the basics and this will be the focus of the next few tutorials. We really should not go further without understanding more about variables, which will be the subject of tutorial 12. Thanks for watching. We hope this tutorial was useful. If it helped you, please like, share, and subscribe.